Hello everyone, um, my name is Cedric Patry, and I will be talking about chapter 4 from Being Consumed by William Cavanaugh. So the focus of chapter 4 was scarcity and abundance, and how that relates to our faith and to our society. Um, so Cavanaugh broke the chapter down into two parts. Um, the first part being hunger and the market, and the second hunger and the Eucharist. So hunger in the market um, spoke about how economics by itself deals with hunger. So economics assumes that there is scarcity, that there is not enough to go around. Um, this isn't based off of how much you have. Um, there are many people who have so much but still feel as though they don't have enough or that there is more to have. Um, but rather this speaks on the human condition, um, that our desires are endless. And our desire is often more individualistic. A, a quote from Adam Smith said, every person is by nature um, first and principally recommended to his own care. Um, and because of our endless desire and our natural inclination to focus on ourselves, this causes the unfortunate effect of leaving those with less to fend for themselves. And this is not to say that to desire is evil. Um, the, the chapter mentions that to desire is to live. You know, the reason you get out of bed in the morning is desire. Um, but that desire in consumer society often leaves us distracted from those who are truly in need. Um, this view also isn't saying that giving to others is wrong, um, but that instead it is a matter of personal preference and not a matter of justice. Um, so hunger and the Eucharist, the second part of the chapter, um, speaks about um, abundance through Jesus Christ, um, who said, uh, whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Um, so Kavanaugh goes on further to explain the Eucharist um, in a different way from what I've heard before. Um, so when we partake in this tradition, um, we allow ourselves to become one with Christ and for him to become one with us. Um, as well as um, becoming one with Christ, we are kind of becoming one with uh, a larger body, um, often known as the body of Christ. Um, and the Bible speaks again about um, the body of Christ and how um, the eye cannot say to the hand that, I have no need of you, um, and neither the hand of the eye. Um, but instead, if, if one member suffers, all suffer together with it. And if one member is honored, that all rejoice together with it. And this seems to uh, contradict a little what I said earlier. Um, I mentioned the quote from Alex Smith that every person is by nature first and principally recommended to his own care. Um, as a Christian body, you are now a part of the body of Christ. Um, but the body of Christ is so much bigger than just you. Um, and through that, you're, you're, like, you're not supposed to think of others as, as really others anymore, but instead as a part of the body of Christ, just as you are. Um, one of the things I really appreciate about this chapter is um, as the economics um, often seems to talk about the kind of the selfishness of individuality. Kavanaugh seems to express that individuality is um, kind of the opportunity to feed back into the body. Um, as an individual in this massive body of Christ, um, you can use the resources you have to support those around you um, just as they support you. These chapters for me kind of seem to lay out a responsibility um, for a Christian, as a Christian. Um, kind of, although it might not be always be the smarter thing or even the more comfortable thing to do, um, we should be supporting each other um, as the body of Christ, um, especially for those who really need it. Um, whether that means with your time um, or with your money or with anything else you have to offer. Um, but we should be supporting each other just as the body supports itself. Um, and just like 
Christ did for us. Um, so thank you.